one of the biggest differences between a 5D individual, intuitive, mystic, is that we know of the unconditional love relationship with pure consciousness. So we're easily able to maintain a playing ground, a playground, in fact, with our oversoul. And on this full moon, we have a couple of messages, channel guidances, because the energies speak to every one of us. We have collective consciousness, but that collective is quote unquote divided. And I say quote unquote, because if anybody knows the one said guru quote is an amazing one, um, whether you call it a stone, a rock, it's, I think he says a tree, a mountain, a person, a divinity, a demon, it's still the same energy fragmented and manif or manifesting itself a million times over, something along those lines. Now, we don't need only our lovely spirituality guru to share with us this information. When I learned about anything religious related way back when, I remember it being about all of us, our children up. And this is where it's all, not just some. And then there's the lovely board of education of educators, the real deal ones. So they get to teach us about the shame, defectiveness, heartbreak, gut wrench, torn apart, that most people, in fact, I've noticed a lot of people don't know they're an adaptive child with an inner child, and they're actually projecting their own household environments with the word karma, by the way, which they know of, but they don't actually understand, humanly speaking, that the ability to move into the grown-up land, so 5D, it's about your energy body, which is connected to that Again, nervous system. For my regular listeners, you know all about the psychoeducation. We discuss it in any one of the moments we have podcast episodes, channeled guidance, and not because the ascension energies, which anybody who knows the term 5D, the ascension energies bring up whatever is still not looked at. Now, the thing is, I've noticed most people talk about themselves as spirituality processes in a human experience, so they dehumanize themselves. They objectify their journey. They don't take ownership of their life. They, in fact, don't take ownership of the very aspects that are the charges that they are being brought to use pure consciousness, unconditional love, to look at with their own flaws and imperfections. They're too focused on projecting upon to others aspects of their own stuff. It's a story that no one can tell. Anybody who has a shame story will have that story for themselves once they get out of the Maya land, which are, again, words that people who do yoga and our spirituality processes use all the time. I've seen many of them being enamored with their own light. And it's very sad to see that, by the way, because they not only claim to be the only ones who are light, they also claim to attract that which is in a obscure light, which, by the way, any practiced yogi will tell you darkness is all that remains, but it's not in this somber, oh my gosh, horrible thing. No, it's, this is the point. It is not in any way, shape, or form in this idea of enlightenment soul age or being emotionless, or you somehow not regarding other people uh, with, uh, I don't know, the different area of emotions. It's a very dehumanized, again, process because of thinking, oh, I'm a spirituality process alone. I come from some other planet. So here's where in the, what's it called, the peak of my ascension journey as I gain knowledge on the metaphysics of the terrorism, and all the beautiful stories and connected to my other lives, uh, it's beautiful. But that's where 4D people get lost in it. So I'm here for the 5D people who don't want to get lost in it. That's why we are still mystics, but we don't need to mystify ourselves. We can demystify it. We have a conversation and more. So my channel guidance is for my lovely 5D. Because you're independent human beings, means you know that nobody can tell you how to live life. means you also know you go and vote. You go and do things. You actively step out of the, you know, you go and build businesses. Oh, and you're not treating our human relationships as a training ground. Another lovely sad guru quote, you're not uh, treating your family as a training ground about your likes and dislikes. See, to move into Dharma, which a 5D love cycle person will instinctively be in, because we're using our left and right modes. And when our emotions come up, we're like, oh, I'm getting upset right now. Oh, I use my upset. Let me apologize for being pissy. Let me work on that tone. Or let me share, yes, my tone was here, but here's why. Why? Because I want to make sure that people that I love know I enjoy our conversations, even when we get passionate. So people who are conscious beings, 
they actually allow themselves to be pure consciousness, unconsciously loving, with their own flaws and imperfections. So we're all going to mess up, quote unquote. We don't really consider it messing up because we're people. If somebody actually thought that perfection existed, this is why we have a bunch of teenagers, adaptive children projecting not only their actual dislikes and likes, their negative, all of it. They're doing transference all over the place. It's a quite um, interesting scene. For those of us who actually know that they're blind, deaf, and their roars create a lot of commotion and not in the best ways possible. However, because we do have the Zen masters out there, the ones who are hearing them, and they're in that actual interest, because every one of us, a million, again, manifestations, we all have a focus. And those would be those educators, the 5D people. The ones who care, so they care so much, so they're like, hmm, I see a recurring hurt here. But they're on the side of the playground, and so they have Krishna Lila. They are using their mental vagal state to see they're in a body that has secure attachment. So they have a healthy relationship with their emotions. And this is important to note, healthy means optimal, it's not an insult. The optimal healthy human brain is an integrated brain, integration of the mind. I'm learning still about it in my interpersonal neurobiology class. It means that all hands are on deck, that your left and right equally work, and that there's not a mind that goes rigid and then chaotic. Instead, what we see are people in an insecure attachment. So whether they're disconnected, preoccupied, or fearful avoidant, they don't know how to inner nurture their actual unconditional love because they're not there yet. They have an attachment system that longs to still be met by the contingent communication that it didn't get when it was a zero to seven month old baby, infant. But uh, let me not burst the bubble of those who continue to live the middle ages and say evil and the devil and the demons and 4D, let's talk about them. When they talk about twin flames, they dehumanize the divine masculine. Apparently, they're the ones who don't want to do the work. So they create separation. And these are people that know each other, by the way. So here, 5D, we have paid subscription-based model content for my lovely oversoul, our lovely oversoul. Your immediate one, it's always going to be a playground, which is why when people are in their defectiveness shame cycles and they have their addictive behaviors, which are not responses to something, yay, no, it's maladaptive as an adult responses to unresolved trauma. It's actually safety behaviors to unresolved trauma. Anybody who has insecure attachment of any type, and then they have fight, flight, freeze, fawn, attach, cry for help, collapse, submit, please, appease. They don't even know that their body is in defense mode, but they don't care to know. So here's the deal. Consciously speaking, I've met many people of all walks of life. And so for a lovely full moon and for our lovely Leo season, the 5D people, those who are functional adults, they are compassionate beyond a reason. We come together to empower humanity, not the opposite. So we're both a spirituality process, a.k.a. functional adults. We're learning how to integrate our mind and take care of our body, restore the body itself. We're not resisting becoming loving. We're not resisting compassion. We recognize, huh, if I'm uncomfortable with the feeling of compassion, then that means I'm not actually comfortable in my own body these are important data points that if you learn about the good psychoeducation you'll you know get that but you don't have to so back to our twin flames as we end this episode the individuals who actually do know about their oversoul in r5d we don't have a training ground as i said we have a playground so when we are presented with likes and dislikes we know that it's our opportunity to expand consciousness it's our opportunity to relate to each other and to pursue relationships to build those relationships to secure base and safe haven unconsciously loving each other for how we are and who we are even saying the fu fu and hugging it out and then supporting each other on whatever it is that our hearts desire work-wise life-wise and so this is what relationships are all about nobody is on a training job to get to somewhere your personality is beautiful your manners can be worked on, but it's really the charge state. And really, it's not even that. It's being able to be a grown-up in equanimity land. The middle ground is where you have learned how to harness your own mind, energy, and heart, your body, all of it, and then maintain your values and stay in your heart body. So with or without yoga, you can ascend to your higher consciousness as a human being. I look forward to seeing you.